Hey guys, my name is Brandon, and today we're going to practice lighting using your groceries that you have at home. I'll cover two lighting setups, a professional lighting setup, and a budget DIY setup so you can get the concepts down without needing a ton of gear. Let's break this down. Step number one, pick your ingredients. In my case today, I grabbed everything needed for a classic guacamole recipe. This gives me a nice variety of color in the shots and a lot of opportunity for different textures within this one recipe. Step number two, come up with a sequence. As you saw in my intro, I decided to do a little sequence of cutting vegetables on my cutting board at a few different angles and shot sizes. Then the sequence ends with our final hero shot, a finished plate of guacamole and chips. To keep the sequence simple, I decided to use only static shots throughout to allow me to control the pacing in the edit very easily. You can start with just a simple three shot sequence to keep things easy, start with a wide shot, then cut to a close up, followed by going back out into a medium to end your three shot sequence. Feel free to use this idea or get creative. This is just a learning exercise. Step number three, lighting. When doing an exercise like this, I like to do it at nighttime, since you will be able to see exactly what each one of your lights is doing. When you shoot during the day, it can be a bit harder as a beginner to gauge if your lights are getting you exactly the desired look that you want, since you will be balancing with the available daylight in your room. When I start lighting, I always start with my key light only and see where that single light gets me. A lot of the time, you may find that a key light is all you need. In this instance, I was lucky enough that Aperture just sent me their new Amaran 60DS to try out, so I started with this with their lantern attachment as my key light. I placed the 60DS near the corner of my island and raised it at a height that could mimic where a kitchen light could reasonably be. I also made sure to lower the skirt on the lantern so I can control the spill of my key light off the background. The reason I'm doing this is so I can light my background separately and have more control of the amount of light hitting back there. Full disclosure before I go any further, Aperture did send me the Amaran 60DS to try out in this video, but they did not sponsor this video and they do not get to review it before it goes live. I've just used their gear for years at this point and thought I'd try the 60DS out in this scenario. All right, our key light looks pretty good as a starting point, but let's see if there's more we can do. When I look at this shot, one of the subtle things I'm noticing is I have some blank wall space in my background, so I filled that empty spot with this plant I had in my living room. With the blank space filled, the last thing this shot is missing is a pop of light in the background. The tricky thing about kitchens is that they always have lighting overhead. This makes it harder to create a natural looking source of light in this shot. What I did to solve this was I took my 300D Mark II LED light and a spotlight mount and shot it directly into the ceiling making an L like this. I also gelled my spotlight mount with an orange gel creating a subtle amount of color contrast in our shot. This way, I don't actually have to put any lights directly in the background because they wouldn't make a ton of sense in this environment. With our lights set from here, you can get a range of shots from the profile like we started with to the front of the cutting board without moving the lights at all. Shooting in this range still maintains a natural amount of depth in the shot. When going in for close-ups, you may want to move your lights a little bit in to get more light on the subject, but other than that, the positioning of lights can stay basically the same for your entire sequence. I even threw in a top-down shot with my X-T4 on a C-stand like this. I'll be doing a full-blown video dedicated to top-down shots in the near future, so hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss it. Now let's try a DIY setup. Here's what you'll need. One or two clamp lights from Amazon or your local hardware store, light bulbs for the clamp lights, a translucent rain jacket, you can get these on Amazon or AliExpress, a clothing hanger to hang the rain jacket, aluminum foil, and these are optional, but a step ladder, tape, and an incandescent light dimmer will probably be handy. You can use whatever bulbs you want since we are practicing lighting and are less concerned about color here. I opted for incandescent bulbs since it's what I have. Also, from now on, I'll refer to incandescent bulbs as tungsten since that is easier for me to say and it's the film term I'm used to. I started by hanging the rain jacket off my existing kitchen fixture, angling it at about the same 45 degree angle as our aperture key light. Then I grabbed my stepladder and clamped my 150 watt clamp light right behind the jacket shooting through it directly. 
This allows me to make my clamp light, which is a small, relatively hard source of light into a larger, softer source of light. Honestly, I was really surprised how good the key light looked on its own, but I decided to add the second clamp light with a 60 watt bulb and shot it at the cutting board from the front. I did also add a lamp dimmer to this light so that I could dim the light slightly to maintain most of my contrast, along with some makeshift tinfoil wrapped around the edges to control the light's spill. You can also use the second clamp light as a background light bounced into the ceiling like this. Here's what our DIY setup looks like compared to the setup using my pro lights. I'm pretty happy with how this DIY setup turned out and honestly I feel like for the most part you wouldn't really be able to tell between the two setups which one was lit with the cheaper fixtures. Now I do want to note a few key differences in the practicality of these two setups. The DIY setup is obviously less versatile in that you can't place and move the lights in different spots very easily. The clamp lights are also not nearly as bright as the aperture lights, so when you go in for extreme close-ups on a macro lens, you may find that you won't have enough light to get everything you want in focus. The reason for that is macro lenses are often best used at a deeper f-stop so you can get more of the subject in focus, which just requires a lot of light. That being said, at a total of roughly $50 plus whatever you can find around your house to mount the lights, this is an easy, affordable way to practice lighting and learn what you do and do not like. I encourage you to experiment with different lighting placement even beyond what I've covered in this video. I hope this little exercise has given you guys some inspiration to take your groceries at home and practice a lighting setup for yourself. If you do try this, please send me a photo on Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out any of the products used in this video, please check the links in the video description. And if you have another lighting setup or concept you want me to explore on this channel, please leave a comment down below.